Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Plugin Boutique, and today we're checking out the BX Subsynth. This is a, an audio effect by Brainworks. It says synth in the name, that might be a little bit misleading, but it does actually synthesize some things. It's not an instrument like you would think normally when you think of a synth. So I just want to get that out of the way right quick. What this thing does is it gives you a lot of control over the low end of your basses or your drums or really anything that you want low end on. It could be your master channel as well. But the really cool thing that Substance does is it adds frequency harmonics to the low end of the spectrum for whatever sample or instrument you're feeding into it. So in this tutorial, I'm just going to run through all of the different parameters inside of here, and we're going to do it on this clarity base I've got here. I'm going to go ahead and shut off Substance for one second, and this is it normally. So it just sounds like a bass, right? I'm going to go ahead and make this loop a little bit shorter. I'm going to go ahead and turn Subsynth on, and I think we should pay attention to the spectrum here. So I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. While this is playing and it's being bypassed uh, Subsynth right now, just check out the spectrum. And when I turn it on and start tweaking these different knobs right here, check out what happens to the low end. Okay, so that's obviously way too much low end, but you can actually see it in the spectrum. And what I wanna do is just go ahead and play with these for a second. So we've got three knobs right here, and I've got synthesized frequency, 56 to 80 hertz. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up very slowly and watch what happens again to the frequency and listen with your ears obviously as well. So watch what happens when I do it with the 24 to 36. You see that? And again, watch what happens with this one, the 36 to 56. So you can see that it's boosting the low end, and it's really cool the way it's doing that. It's just synthesizing that using the information inside of the audio that's getting processed through the effect. And obviously we can come in and tweak all three of these at once, and then we'll combine to make a really full low end. Using something like this on drums, you could really make some nasty, nasty kick drums with this thing. The subharmonics parameter is just going to essentially how much of these are going to be added to the signal. So we do, it's like a, a mix knob between these three and the output. Now, just real quick, we've got um, synthesis input, mid or stereo. We've got gain in, gain out. We've got a mix knob, so your dry wet's right here for everything. We've got the mono stereo section down here, and this is really cool. So the mono maker is going to make everything below the value here mono. And this is very helpful when you're dealing with something like bass. Usually around 100 uh, hertz is where you're going to want to set that. And then we can boost up the width here with the stereo width knob. So the stereo width is only going to be applied to everything above wherever the mono maker parameter is set. So just keep that in mind, and it can go up to 400% width. And another real quick thing too, uh, for these synthesized frequency knobs, there is a solo button. This isn't going to solo, and you won't be able to hear the original signal. This just solos the other two. They'll shut the bypass these two. Uh, or I can solo this one and bypass these. That's what those do. Just gotta double click it to turn it off. And these little knobs are actually trim knobs where you can boost the signal as well. So you can get quite loud with these things. And then you come over here to mode. We've got a smooth and harsh, and this is going to be for the squeeze and drive parameters. A squeeze is essentially a compressor. Drive is gonna be like a distortion.
as you can see there, we're getting a lot of coloring to the audio. And the really cool thing about this is these two knobs will only affect the frequency range between this frequency and this frequency. So the low cut, if I bring it down to off, and put this one, the high cut to off, it's going to affect the entire frequency range. But if I don't want it to affect the higher frequencies, I can just pull this down and pull this up if I want to bypass those lower frequencies. And again, it's essentially setting up a band pass here for these to affect. So the lower, everything below this number won't get affected and everything above this number won't get affected. And then we have a filtering system where we can really start to tweak the sound as well. So that's pretty much a run through of what's available inside of this thing. It's really, really great on bass. And like I said before, it's really, really great on drums, especially that kick drum. Uh, another note, we can have up to four different instances. So if you come in and tweak this out, obviously, jump back. This is the first one I made. Now this is that second one. So four different instances you can flip through to find which one works best. And one final note for working inside of Ableton Live with this thing, there are no presets located inside of the GUI here. And that's because you have to come down here to this drop down menu right here. So we can uh, easily come in and choose different presets from right here. So I just wanted to make that note for Ableton Live users. I believe other DAWs like Logic will have a drop down above the plugin inside of its container, but don't quote me on that. So anyway, that's a quick look at what's available inside of the BX Subsynth by Brainworks. I hope you learned something. Joshua Casper here for Plugin Boutique, and I will see you next time.